right, so we gotta talk about this, the mid-engine Corvette, because I saw an article talking shit about it and all the comments and everything, and I just had to give my two cents, because that's what I do best. Now, this article said that the mid-engine Corvette will be a disaster, and I get it, you know, anytime something new comes out, especially when you have something, a new version, that's gonna replace something as iconic and well-known as a car like the Corvette, you're gonna have people that are like, oh, you know, the new version sucks, no matter what. People said that about the C7. People said that in 2005, when the C6 came out, people said, oh, it fucking sucks, it doesn't have flip-up headlights. In 2004, Chevy was selling a car. In 2004, Chevy was selling a car, the Corvette, with flip-up headlights, and people wanted that in 2005. You know, some of the older crowd, I, I assume. Um, that's insane. So that shows you everything. And even I'm guilty of this shit. When the new Ford GT came out, I was like, oh, I should really have a V8, not a V6. And then I kind of realized that maybe I was being just a little bit silly. So here are the two big complaints that everyone was saying. Number one, they were saying the Corvette has always been front engine and it's supposed to be that way. Now, has it always been front engine? Hell yeah. Is it supposed to be? Fuck no. And the reason why I say that is because way back in the day when this car was first being conceived, you know, when the Corvette was just a little fetus, just a little sperm swimming around. The original people who were involved with the car wanted it to be mid-engine, and it didn't happen for a lot of reasons over the years, but you know, when people say, oh, it's supposed to be front engine, no, definitely not. It just kind of worked out that way. I would definitely argue that from the very beginning, it was supposed to be a mid-engine design. That's what the original people intended this car to be, and the fact that it's finally happening is awesome. The second thing that people were saying is that if you make the car mid-engine, it's gonna push the price way up, and you're gonna make it out of reach for regular people, and I understand that concern. I really do because the Corvette is supposed to be kind of the everyday man's sports car or supercar. You know, it's supposed to be a very accessible car to anybody. Now, with that being said, we don't know yet if this is going to be a ZR1 or a C8, you know, just the introduction of a new Corvette or whatever. But whatever it is, rest assured, I'm sure that there will be a version that is still relatively inexpensive. You know, I'm sure that even if this one, when it first comes out, is 150 or whatever, there's got to be a version that'll be less, you know, under 100K. And that's still a lot of money, but let's not pretend like Corvettes recently have been super affordable. You know, a C6 Z06, depending on how you got the options, was well over 100K. The C6 ZR1, which is what this car might be kind of based on, you know, a ZR1 price point at that level, didn't even start to like 110, regardless of options. So, you know, we gotta be realistic. We can't pretend like the, these Corvettes now over the last few years have always been super cheap because they're not, they're getting expensive, but uh, it's still super inexpensive compared to what it competes with. You know, compared to the market, it's still the cheapest thing out there by far. You know, the Dodge Viper and this are insanely cheap for what you get, for the amount of car that you get. So if you wanna play at that next level, you wanna be mid-engine, you wanna be a full-blown supercar, you gotta raise the price a little bit. You gotta play in that price range, and that's totally okay with me. And again, you know, if you can't afford one when it first comes out, that's okay. You know, maybe when this car comes out, I might not even be able to afford it, and I'm still okay with it. You know, if it's above, like the people are thinking right now around 150K, I can swing that, I can swing 150K. If it starts creeping up there, like a lot of cars do, you know, whenever something comes out, people say, you know, the makers of the car say, oh, it's gonna be, you know, 120, it's gonna be 150. And then as time goes on, it's like, well, maybe 160. And then by the time it comes out, it's like 200K. If it comes out and it's 200K, I can't afford that. I just can't right now at this point in my life. So even if that happens to me, I will not be upset because I understand that this is what Chevy has to do. You know, if you wanna be taken seriously as a supercar even, you gotta look at it this way. If you wanna play in that game and compete with those cars, not just on a performance level, you know, you got to be a little bit more exclusive. It has to be a little bit more limited, so being expensive, a little bit more expensive, is okay. Now, like I was going to say earlier before I got sidetracked, which seems to happen a lot, maybe I really do have ADHD or something. Oh, I'm already on another fucking tangent. But uh, anyway, you know, when the car first comes out, if you can't afford it or whatever, prices will come down. It's not like it's going to be a limited edition Porsche or whatever. It's a Corvette. They're going to make enough of them to where the price will fall, you know, and you'll be able to get one then, or maybe I will or whatever. I hope it. I hope it's 150 so I can buy it right away. But if it's not, you know, no big deal. It's just the way things go. Now, you look at a C6, Z06 or whatever, or a C6 ZR1, you know, you can get those in like the low 30s for the Z06. And I think the ZR1 now you can even get in the 50 to 60 range, depending on options of course. So it will definitely be affordable at some point. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the new Corvette. And of course, over time, as people get more information and have a little bit of uh, time to get acclimated to it, more people, I think, will become a little less salty about it and be like, okay, this is going to be pretty cool. You know, the only way 
that Chevy can screw this up in my mind is if it's ugly. Because I can speak for myself and probably for a lot of people. It doesn't matter how good the performance is. If it doesn't look badass, if it doesn't look good, like it's got to look as good as a McLaren or a Lambo. It has to. And that's some stiff competition there. So if it doesn't look good, I won't buy one. So Chevy, don't you dare fuck this up because I want this car so bad. So let me know what you think of the new Corvette. Is this the right direction or is this potentially a big mistake? I guess we'll have to wait and see. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe. Take care. Have a great day.